Clarissa and Herbert Williams. We live in the beautiful Upper Cumberland region of Tennessee. Our area has gone through massive growth. We are meeting new people every day. Everyone loves the charm and character and the friendliness that defines Putnam County. We believe everyone has a story to tell. With so many friendly faces, places, businesses, and people here, we want to introduce you to the area we all love. Welcome, Welcome to, to Cookville, Cookville Now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cookville Now, your podcast about the people, places, and businesses that make Cookville and the Upper Cumberland what it is today. I am with my co-host, Clarissa Williams. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our guest today, Michael Detweiler. Thank you for coming. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm going to read your bio because it's very impressive. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I'll forget for those that watch. Um, Michael Detweiler is a longtime Cookville resident with vast political and professional experience. He's been a local weather observer for more than 45 years. His Cookville Weather Guy Facebook and Instagram page reach hundreds of thousands each and every month. Michael is passionate and about keeping the public informed, whether it's quiet or stormy. His connections with others in the professional weather industry give him unique insight and perspective into forecasting and observations. He is a sought after as he is sought after as a public speaker with civic groups, public schools, and Tennessee Tech University. He worked for nearly a decade as an aide to former U.S. Congressman and House Budget Chairman John Diane Black, serving as her field representative for the Upper Cumberland region. Michael has a successful track record from running million-dollar restaurants in advertising and also in the medical field. He has advised many seeking public office over the years and volunteered on several campaigns. Currently, Michael is over accounting, payroll, IT, public relations, marketing, and special projects for Occupational Health Center here in Cookville. He is married to former Sean Hudson. They have three children and one grandchild and another grandchild on the way. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> they are members at Hope Church in All Good. In their spare time, they enjoy Del Hollow Lake with family, and Michael enjoys golfing with friends. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Yes, Thank you for having me on today. Well, we are excited to talk, and I think Herbert's going to kick off our question and uh, segment today. Well, we're going to focus on the, you know, the weather guy. Bit. Sure, sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Which we think is important, and that's basically why we honored you, because you're selflessly taking the, the time. The with, you know, with a thumbs up award, we're ta sure. you're taking the time out of your own busy life to to sh to share these this information, which is important, mm -hmm. as we could tell in the past few years. Absolutely, very important. Well, what inspired you? I'm I'm just curious. What inspired you to want to be a weather observer and get so interested in the weather? We lived in several unique places. While I was growing up, um, my dad had um, gone back to college after having a couple of child of children, and so we were in Central Ohio, and he was at Wilmington College. And after he graduated, he he basically went into the industrial field, meaning that he. Um, his goal was to be in management. Mm -hmm. And and so in order to move up, he was willing to move. So he's plant manager here, he moves here to be able to move, move up the ladder. Mm -hmm. And so we were in central Ohio. We moved to northern Indiana, and you can imagine the snow. Oh, yes. Northern yeah. Indiana. We didn't miss days of school. It was flat as could be. We lived be. in Illinois for a so while. So you yeah. all know that. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So, so we had snow there. Um, some days we, it was dark getting on the bus. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you're up north, so it was dark when you got home. Exactly. So it was really different. And, and, and that, for me, as a first grader, second grader, was kind of a frame of reference. And then we moved to Maryland. Dad accepted a position there. And uh, Hurricane Agnes hit there. And it was, you know, all very interesting to me as a child. And then, like my mother was saying earlier, that, you know, we ended up in Mississippi and the shock of seeing five years after Camille hit, 
Camille was the um, 1969 version of Katrina mm. and just was massive destruction. In Katrina, New Orleans got all the publicity, but the Mississippi Gulf Coast took a direct hit. Mm -hmm. And they didn't suffer from the flooding and people not being able to get out of their house. And so in Mississippi, you know, I got to be able to track hurricanes on actual paper. You know, we do it now via computer and the internet, but right. we tracked it on paper when the coordinates were released uh, by the Hurricane Center. And so that's where I got my interest. We moved here in, in 1976 and... Um, Yet uh, Tennessee has the best weather because oh, it's yes. it's varied. You know, mm -hmm. we we have all four seasons, and and so I I really love the weather here. And Cookville was home from the first day that we moved here because honestly, with the way my dad was move, moving up, we expected to be here four or five years, right? Get out of high school mm -hmm. and then be able to go somewhere else, and we're all here, right? Mm -hmm. and this is home, so. Um, that's how it all got started, the passion. Wow. What types of, of tools do you use to measure the weather or, sure. I guess, predict the weather? It's a great, great question. Um, in, in the old days, we used an analog barometer that measures the air pressure. If the mm -hmm. barometer's falling, the weather's more unsettled. If it's mm -hmm. rising, the weather's more, sta more stable. Today, everything is electronic. Um, I have a weather station on top of my house at home that uh, has no moving parts. So when you think of a weather station, you think of an anemometer and the cups mm -hmm. spinning around and it measures the wind. It doesn't do that. It measures it through ultrasonic technology where the wind is blowing across a plate. And, and that's wow. how it measures the wind. The benefit of that is, is that the weather station never wears out. So if you have moving parts, mm -hmm. the anemometer, the tipping bucket for rain, so that, so it fills up the bucket, it empties itself out, then it goes back. And so it's measuring the rain like that. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually those wear out. And I had before this current station, I had a Davis weather station, which is one of the better uh, consumer stations. And it, it, it's still running. It's lasted 14 years. Wow. And Davis did a story on my station in their magazine, which was very kind for mm -hmm. them to do. But um, typically the ones like you see at Lowe's, like the Accurites or mm -hmm. the Lacrosses of the world, they're good stations. They're at a price point for a reason. They mm -hmm. only last a few years, two, three years, and then you've got to replace it again. Mm -hmm. I wanted something better, and so mentioned it to my wife. My mother buys it as a birthday present because she knows the passion that mm -hmm. I have for mm -hmm. it. And, and so the station I have today is a Tempest weather station. It's the newest technology, but they're trying to hit that consumer market, but with just a better product. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and so it actually measures the rain by taps. So when the rain is falling down on the station, that's how it's measuring it, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. And it's all on an app. It doesn't come with a screen. It doesn't come in, you know, where you're looking at a screen to see everything. It's on the app. It's online. You can see all the other Tempest stations around the area. I've had several friends purchase the station because they were so impressed with it. And um, it's the, the technology is really changing. I, we have always had a weather radio. Sure. Um, you know, for a long time, I'd say maybe when we were younger, we didn't really think about it. But as soon as we moved to Illinois when our kids yes, were little, we were never without one. Right, <laughs> right. And they, listen, it... it if you ask me what what's the number one tool that I ought to have related to the weather, I'd say the weather radio. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Um, this is controversial, but I'll say it anyway: is that there should not be any tornado sirens up in our area. It is not the 1940s. Mm -hmm. We don't raise our windows right. all summer long. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Oh yeah. So we rely on these sirens why well, didn't hear the siren well yeah the thunderstorm was so loud <laughs> that's mm -hmm. true uh, i mean it's not designed for us to hear indoors because right. our homes now are built such that they're pretty much not airtight but mm -hmm. they're tight and so you don't hear the siren so it gives us a false sense of security mm -hmm. 
Um, James Spann, who's a, a meteorologist in Birmingham, Alabama, he's very passionate about taking the, sir the sirens out. He's been doing television weather for 50 years, and he says it gives us a false sense of mm -hmm. security. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see that because if, and, and especially of a night, you're, in, you're asleep at 2 a.m. in the morning. There's no siren going to mm -hmm. wake you up. Now, that weather radio will oh, wake yeah. you up. It jumps you out of the bed. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, back, in tor back when that, the, the tornado happened here, it went off the first time and it said tornado watch. I just slapped it and I went, right. oh, well. But when it went off the second time and said warning, yes, sir. I knew something was yes, up. Sir. But that's sir. what woke me up. It wasn't. Right, the outside sirens. I so I get what we you're usually saying. don't even hear them. I mean, our weather no, radio no, no. goes off. Your weather radio, sure. We have a weather radio here in the office too, and the girls were here one day, and they had no idea we had one. And I happened to be back in our team room where we've got like six team members back there, and I'm just in there talking, and the thing's going off, and they're like, "What in the world is what that is noise?" That noise? <laughs> right. It was like it's a weather radio. They yes. were like, "Where do we need to go?" I'm like, "It's okay. It's just a thunderstorm." <laughs> well, well, I would be, and, and again, these are things that emergency management and, and the county commission and county mayor, we have these discussions at some point that when we have to upgrade our current siren system, I say don't do it, appropriate the money, and buy a weather radio for every household in the county. Mm. Mm. I think it's that's less an money. excellent idea. Oh, yeah. Well, we Way lived less in, money. We um, Richmond, Kentucky, near sure. the Bluegrass Army I know Depot. where that is. Yeah. We, I remember distinctly, um, we at the time had just moved from Clinton, Tennessee, yes. um, and we also had one of those careers where you had to move to sure. climb the ladder. To climb the ladder. So, I get it. We were living there, and we were within the, I guess, the target zone or whatever it would be called, where that if something happened with the um, the gas and the different things stored under the bunkers or whatever at the depot, that our kids were going to school in Berea, and they would have been trucked down to, in a van or a bus to, uh, I believe it was London, Kentucky at the sure. time, but we would have been on the other side of the river going the opposite direction. Sure. As a mom, I was totally uncomfortable right. with that. So sure. we ended up moving to Richmond from Berea. So we would all be going the same direction. Um, but at the time, you know, our son was just a baby, you know, just not even maybe 12 months old. And they gave kits, if you lived within mm -hmm. a certain radius of... Uh, like a, a gas mask and sure. taught you how to seal off how the windows use it. and sure. all. Right. And I, it was the strangest thing to me because my dad, we grew up watching Star Trek and Star Wars sure. and all these sci-fi things. And I'm like, my dad prepared me for this, but not r realized. Right, right. You know? <laughs> Could this really happen kind of thing? Sure. So I think it's a great idea if that there is a way to appropriate the funds sure. to do that. And if it's less money, especially because you have a better quality of life because right. you know you're going to be right. safer for the most part. Absolutely. And I think the March 2020 tornado really um, – change things for a lot of people and i deal with it on on my weather page oh, you know in private messages of people being stressed out mm -hmm. and my goal is on that weather page is to be a voice of reason a voice of calm especially during the storms and not get people stirred up there are guys out there on on youtube and you can watch them who this is going to be the worst one ever oh, yes. and all that other stuff. I don't believe in doing that. No. That's just not. Well, people stop tuning in. Well, they when do. They see that. Well, they, and it's sensationalism and it's for clicks and mm -hmm. likes yes. and comments yes. and everything else. And of course they're monetizing it and it's, you know, they're trying to drive that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the goal on my page is to educate, inform, and when it is bad, keep people calm and reassure them because think about this march 2020 the last time someone died in a tornado in our county was april 3rd 1974 mm. so we went that whole time mm -hmm. now we've had tornadoes in in the county they were mm -hmm. they were like what f1 or f2 sure ef0 ef1 yeah. minor and and we didn't lose any lives and right. so this this was one of those events, and you see them on television, the, the person being interviewed who says, I never thought it could happen here. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the way a lot of us were after Mm -hmm. March 3rd, 2020. Well, I think even after 2020, um, we've lived here for going on five years now. Um, So we're from the area, so we're kind of used to the weather. And when you grow up with that kind of weather and you're used to the seasons, it's 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 a big deal but it you're used to it right there are so many people moving here that since 2020 that have no idea what that was like sure Mm -hmm. um part of the reason we started cookville now is because there's so many people in cookville now that are not from here absolutely um so there's a a lot of people who are from communities that just don't get tornadoes right um so i think it's a big difference it's a culture shock and then they hear all of us talking about it out the march 2020 yes. sure right. and, and again that's where i go back to i need to be that voice of reason and give people the facts that mm-hmm. something like that so let's take all of tennessee before march 3rd 2020 the last ef4 in tennessee was in murfreesboro in 2009 Mm -hmm. so it had been 11 years since there had been a tornado that powerful strike within tennessee Mm -hmm. so again it's a rare very rare situation the the conditions have to be perfect they do Mm -hmm. absolutely they do and um and we are typically not caught off guard by the development of severe storms now You can't say that this area is going to get a a tornado versus this area is not. So Mm -hmm. for somebody to say, well, we never saw it coming, that's not quite accurate. Yes, Mm -hmm. we knew that in the days leading up to this event that the forecast was for potentially strong to severe storms. Mm -hmm. But to say, you got to tell us where that that tornado is going to be, we can't. The technology is just not there. It's it's different from a hurricane. It is. Oh, you you can can, days and days and days of warning. Exactly. Yes, sir. Slow moving. You Mm -hmm. have time to prepare. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Totally agree with you. Okay. What were some of the, I guess, what are some of the Weather patterns that were real interesting to you over your period of of observing the weather sure, here in Tennessee. Sure. I, I, you know, uh, snow is always something that's popular with everybody, mm-hmm. um, including including myself. I mean, um, in the earlier years in Cookville in the seventies and eighties, we had something called Channel Seven that was on the cable mm-hmm. television. It was scrolling, like um, it would scroll the weather for forecast across the top and then it would have news stories and it have advertisements because you got to pay for it mm-hmm. right so it'd have a car dealership or a real estate firm or whatever and and so watching that waiting for all putnam county schools are closed i mean that was a middle school dream right mm-hmm. and then when i got into <laughs> high school it was even better oh, you, you yeah. know because i was my parents would say that um i was a uh smart student but i wasn't a motivated student <laughs> and so occasionally dad had to motivate me oh, so yeah. it was always great to get out of school so i think that is probably um the number one thing and then i just love observing being able to measure the rain i have not only the electronic rain gauge but i have a manual gauge and i manage a um for the county, uh, I manage a um, group of people who measure the rain, and anybody can do it. It's a it's a it's a volunteer job, mm-hmm. and it um, um, to to go see and empty that rain gauge out the last several days. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, to me, I just enjoy it. Right. Uh, and Channel Channel Five came down and did a story on our organization. Yeah, there's, I saw that. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. twenty five thousand of us now across the country who who report every day right and 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 it's important because rain is not the same all across and we saw that recently with that huge flooding incident we had kind of from your business here eastward towards Mm -hmm. all good Mm -hmm. just in that area (laughs) right four and a half inches of rain over a couple hour period did a lot of flooding in Mm -hmm. white plains Mm -hmm. shut their golf course down for Mm -hmm. several days and but then baxter at a quarter of an inch. So go 10 miles down the road. And so that's why it's important that mm-hmm. we do what we do with me- with measuring the rain. And if you're watching this and 
want to contact me, I can help you get started with that. Yeah, that's so. a, that was that's a good point. <laughs> a good plug. The there. There. <laughs> yeah, the more yes. the merrier. So when you are looking at all these different things, especially right now, we've got the droughts that's been yes, going ma'am. on and lots of just crazy weather patterns. What do you think is the most accurate for you? Do you have something that's tried and true? True. Or? Yeah, I, I I focus on uh, bringing the information from the National Weather Service. So 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 these are professionals who aren't doing it to get in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. They're doing it because it's a passion, and they're they'll never be in front of a camera. They're mm-hmm. doing it because that's what they wanted to do in life. And, mm-hmm. and um, the National Weather Service has no commercial venture in mind. They're not mm-hmm. trying to sell us anything, which there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, right. I'm, all, I'm all for marketing and selling and mm-hmm. advertising yeah. and everything else. It's oh, yeah. what makes the world work. Yes. Right. And, 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 and so I bring the information from the National Weather Service. I'll pull stories from AccuWeather, from Fox Weather, from mm-hmm. the Weather Channel. If it's something that's interesting that I think for our area, oh, yeah. I will pull those stories and, of course, give the, the proper credit. Mm-hmm. Um, if I see pictures that I think would be in- interesting to people, I'll post those and give credit as well. But it... Um, I, I don't typically will bring a forecast just from a random place. I just right. don't. Um, I, I'm not in the weather entertainment business, mm-hmm. Although, mm-hmm. although I try and keep the page entertaining to people. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just that I'm, you know, I'm not going to name the winter storms and <laughs> oh, yeah. things like that. You don't want to have a book of names. No, and no, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is, this is winter storm Nord or whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> There's a few that I'm watching. I'm like, I right. thought it was a different name. Right. And then it's a different name again. I'm like, well, I missed a, missed yeah. a few of them in between. <laughs> we need to have a winter storm Herbert, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I, I haven't wondered about that before. Right. That is right. Yeah. You do need one. You need, you need one. So. Well, how have weather observations, you think, changed over the years? And then you spoke about that briefly. About yes, sir. The gauges. How has it changed over the years, particularly for the upper Cumberland, Tennessee region area? I think we have a lot more people involved in it from the Tempest weather stations to the uh, rainfall measuring group that we have. And um, it's just easier today. You you know, when we think about our laptops and our cell phones and all those things, um, it's just easier to measure. You don't have to have a lot of special tools. You don't have to invest a lot of Mm -hmm. money in it. If you want a weather station and your budget's a hundred bucks, you can get one. Right. If you, um, if you only want to measure the rain and you want to participate in our group, I think that rain gauge is 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. Now it's not that $5 one that you can get at, you know, one of the big box stores, but it lasts a lot longer because it's, we all use the same gauge when we're measuring that rain, mm-hmm. that rainfall, so that the data is accurate. Right. And so I, I think today there's just more opportunity to be involved and to have a community of people who have the same interests. Okay. And so that's how I think it's different. All right. Well, you are listening to and watching Cookville Now. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this short break, and we're going to hear about the future of the Cookville Weather Guy. We put your company in front of the right audience. Our services include website creation, search engine optimization, search engine management, social media management, geofencing, video production, podcasts, and more. We can help you get found easy and affordable. We are your partner. We work with you as your team, giving you the best option for marketing. Stop by today. Email us or call us at 931-854-1313. Welcome back. We are continuing our interview here with Michael Detwaller, the weather guy of Cookville. So we were talking before the break about so many new people coming to the area. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about the importance of weather observation for some of the newcomers who may not be familiar with things that we're dealing with? Absolutely. Especially this time of the year. I I would say get involved. You know, again, I kind of, that's the reoccurring theme here Mm -hmm. is we would love to have you. We would love to connect with you. You know, if you have an interest in measuring the rain, then, then sign up. 
And again, I'll be happy to, uh, you know, people can contact me and uh, be happy to help them. And it's a part of a group. It is. It's part of a group. And, and I would really like, we have, um, we have eight to 10 who report almost every, every day. And, you know, at some point I would like to get that group together in Mm -hmm. the same room for everybody to see each other and, that would be cool. Probably. Connect. And, and, and so that's, um, I would encourage folks who have moved in from out of town. First off, welcome to mm-hmm. our area. We are, we are glad you're here. Yes. Now there mm-hmm. may be some people that complain about y'all being here, <laughs> but we are glad you <laughs> all are here are Oh yeah, because this is a, a great community to live in. And, um, uh, uh, the life of a place is new people coming to the town, mm-hmm. and that's what really sustains life here. Mm-hmm. Right. And going back to the importance of observers and being in a group, what are the, some of the ways you all collaborate with one another for uh, when you're when you're observing the weathering, and getting the information to sure. the people that need sure. it? So there's um, there's about four or five guys who do what I do here in the Upper Cumberland. And um, uh, there's a guy named Austin. There's a guy named, um, uh, sorry, I'm having a brain cramp. <laughs> Anthony Taylor's another guy. Mm-hmm. Herschel Jenkins down in White County is another guy. All of us are talking behind the scenes mm-hmm. via either text message or, or, mm-hmm. or a messenger. And um, especially when the weather is looking like it's not going to be nice, right? And 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 so that's kind of I got I got my laptop here, I got my tablet here, I've got my phone, um, of course the weather radio, and and I've got the television on, and and so, in a in a severe weather situation, you know we're all not we're communicating. Of course we're kind of got a heavy load, and that mm-hmm. happened a couple months ago when we got the four inches in a couple hours. Mm-hmm. For some of them, they had nothing to do. They were kind of surprised, and then I was being bombarded by messages. and 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 so it's a it's a community of people that just care about that. Everybody mm-hmm. has a has a job they go to every day that has nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. I'm the same. I'm the same way. This is this is not a paying gig. This is a service for right. our for our area. And um, it's a service that I'm, as you can tell, passionate about. And I feel a responsibility right. mm-hmm. to provide the information. And it, it's easy in the morning to wake up and say, hey, good morning. It's 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. We're expecting an 80% chance of rain today. The high today will be 77. Um, hey, on this date, you know, we got 2.93 inches of rain in 1992. And in 1994, we had golf ball size hail, you know, all of that information. Right. I've got rain records back to, and this will be shocking, to 1896 oh, wow. in wow. Cookville. So the National Weather Service had shared that with me because they're excited about having partners who are mm-hmm. normal mm-hmm. and, 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 and not who sensationalizing. Right, not <laughs> sensationalizing it. And, and, and they're more than willing to share the information with, with you. And when I started this, I reached out to the news channels because that's who you see in a severe weather event is mm-hmm. the professionals mm-hmm. in media doing what they do to warn us. And I want to put a rumor to bed the people at the Nashville television stations do care what happens over in this area, and they do stick with it. They wow. don't go back to regular programming until the threat, we're talking about the severe weather threat, mm-hmm. is over with. They don't forget us here in Cookville or Livingston or mm-hmm. Gainesboro Sparta. or Sparta. Mm-hmm. That I hear that, and that's just not true. They... Um, they're passionate about it, and they're going to stick with it. This is their viewing area. Mm-hmm. They don't want negativity. They want eyeballs. They want eyeballs. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's how they get paid. Yes. You know, that's how oh, they yeah. charge the rates they can charge. Yes. Right. So, so it's it's very important. So they care about what's going on here, and and, and so I, I do deal with that. Um, complaint from time to time is that they just switch off of us no they switch off because the threat has ended right. or moved to someone else correct <laughs> or if because we're in the higher elevation 
you know, our threat typically is lower right. than it is in, say, southwestern Middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The threat there is typically higher because they're the. It's like baking a cake. You know, up here in the Upper Cumberland, typically the eggs get left out of baking the cake, mm-hmm. and 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 so they can break away and mm-hmm. go back to regular programming, and and it's okay because the threat has dropped. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one thing that I try and do, especially during the severe weather events, is to let people know it's safe to go to bed. Right. And that's that's great when you're real, real tired. And you it is. You want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. Oh, yeah. I don't want to stay up. No. You know? But again, I feel a responsibility, so I do, oh, yeah. I do stay up until the threat's done. Well, that's awesome. Well, not as serious about, like, really scary weather Mm -hmm. but uh your typical day i told your wife earlier that i utilize the um your facebook page to look at things for my plants and Mm -hmm. is there going to be a frost do i need to worry about that right now i think um everybody's trying to remember to water their plants is there any advice you want to give to people who uh this will air on tuesday next week around 3 30 i don't know how far out You might have an idea of anything that people should have on their mind. Uh, We're going to flip off, flip away from how the weather has been with the rain that we've had the past week or so. And it's going to turn hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's going to stay hot because we're now in summer. Mm -hmm. We'll have little blips of where the temperatures will go down and we'll only be in the upper seventies, which is fantastic for a Mm -hmm. high in Cookville in the summertime. I mean, (laughs) I love it. But um, we will turn hot again. And again, those of us who have gardens mm-hmm. need to keep an eye on the plants and mm-hmm. give them water, you, you know, when we see that they're, need, they're needing it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have uh, plants in pots, I, I would say that's a daily watering, mm-hmm. especially in the summer. Oh, if yeah. we get some rain, then that's okay. You don't yeah. have to water that. Day. Right. So um, it, it's going to be a... a Typical Tennessee summer, hot with occasional rain. Um, it'll probably be a near normal temperature wise. People okay. ask me that a lot. How, how does this deviate from normal? And for June, interestingly enough, our our highs have been nor- normal. Where the difference is, is in our lows. We've had a bunch of nights where it's been cool. Mm-hmm. Some nights in the 40s. Oh, yeah. Many nights in the 50s and just a few nights in the 60s. So I'll vote for those if that gets rid of those pesky mosquitoes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like sitting outside on the back porch and getting eaten yeah. up. Yeah, I know. I don't like that. What advice would you give someone who wants to become a weather observer? Um, I would say don't beat yourself up if you miss a day measuring the rain. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Um, you don't have to do it every day. And that's what we tell folks in our rainfall measuring group. Mm-hmm. If you go on vacation, then when you get back, see how much rain is in it, and you report that day of how much rain fell, and it's just a multi-day accumulation from when you left last Saturday to when you got home today. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not the end of the world. Right. And, and so, you don't have to uh, stay here and never leave town <laughs> because it might rain and you can't empty your em, empty your gauge. You, you, you know, I go on vacation, and but I can easily post from Pigeon Forge. Mm-hmm. Or, or wherever we are, and and am I missing it on the ground? Well, sure, but in this day and age of technology, I mean, I can get on the camera on top of the Justice Center and be able to see the courthouse square and right. the skies and everything else. I can take a screenshot oh, yeah. of that and post it to my page, and mm-hmm. and so I would, I would just enjoy it. Is what I would tell folks. Yeah. And learn something new. Absolutely, I love learning new new things. I'm a mm-hmm. big consumer of um, of uh, electronic type items. You, you know, I love the updates on watches. You know, I have a mm-hmm. oh yeah Pixel watch, and I mm-hmm. love it. And 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 I have a not a new Pixel phone, but I love that. And I love watching videos about. It. I love learning about mm-hmm. those. And with the weather um, page. 
on Facebook and Instagram with having the mobile devices. It's just real easy and real quick to be able to post on it. So mm-hmm. it doesn't take up a ton of time, mm-hmm. um, especially when the weather's quiet. Oh, there's, yeah. there's times that I may only post once or twice a day, and that's just to give you the forecast, you know, for the day. Mm-hmm. And then at night, you know, giving you the overnight and what we're expecting the next day. Right. Now the eyes really go down. The viewership really <laughs> yeah. drops off mm-hmm. when the weather's boring. But if we got snow coming, it explodes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, um, May, for instance, was a... Um, surprisingly big month for for me on the Facebook page. I think a hundred, a one point two million views uh, for May, which is kind of odd. That that wow. that can happen in the winter mm-hmm. time. It, it's kind of rare for it to happen in the month of May. So now June, I'm 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 looking like kind of like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, the views are down like 70% or something crazy. Yeah, so. but you got to account a lot of that to vacations and well, all, all kinds of stuff. You and do. if the weather has been boring up to the last week. Right, right, <laughs> right. So. It, 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 definitely, it, it definitely ebbs and flows based on what's going on. You know, when we had those heavy rains um, and – uh, some of the kayak group people mm-hmm. sent me that beautiful shot of Burgess mm-hmm. Falls. Well, it was amazing oh, yeah. how mm-hmm. many views that, yes. that shot of Burgess Falls got, how many times it was shared just mm-hmm. over and over again. And it was a simple shot from a guy in a kayak who yeah. wow. took a, who took a picture of it. And the ecotourism benefits all of that that just oh, keeps going goodness. and going. It is. And, and, you know, they run that as a business where they'll take you mm-hmm. um, on these – kayak trip so he's happy as can be he's happy to share any picture that he can because guess what it's going to draw eyes to his Mm -hmm. business and i'm and i'm glad for it right i'm happy to promote it there's another guy who has a drone and he'll send me things Mm -hmm. and i'll share things off of his off of his page and he's chiming in he says hey thank you you know Mm -hmm. because again i want to see people successful right mm-hmm. and and take care of this everybody help each other here in our right hometown. right and, and and those guys that i mentioned you know austin and herschel and and uh, michael browning um and anthony i mean we're none of us are in competition no yeah. I, I mean we're we're in it together oh other. my gosh it's yeah. totally you see because anthony wants to reach the whole upper cumberland mm-hmm I don't have enough hours in the day to, <laughs> for Carthage weather and Gainesboro mm-hmm. weather. Now, I will mention it if, for instance, there's a severe storm and it looks like it's going to affect our friends in Jackson County. Mm-hmm. I'll bring it up. But every day, you know, that's my niche is Cookville, mm-hmm. broadly Putnam County. Mm-hmm. I'll let our friends in Baxter know if, some, if something's going on. And, and so... Each, each of us kind of have our own niche, and, and and my goal is is to promote them as well, right? And comment on their pages and be encouraging to the to them because I guess that's something I've learned in my old age um, as a life lesson is is man build people up, bring yes. them bring them with you. You mm-hmm. know, if you're doing well, bring them along. Don't drag them down. Right. If they're doing better than you, I'll be the first cheerleader yes. to say, man, you're doing great. I'm right. proud of you. We can all learn from each we other. We can. Absolutely. Everybody's got something they can learn. They, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So what is the future for Cookville Weather Guy? That's a great question. So <clears throat> I do participate in... Um, different um, chat groups and video groups where we talk about kind of what should we be doing with our marketing of our of our pages. And I just sat in one recently with Danielle Breezy at News mm-hmm. 2, and um, she just really hammered the fact you got to do live shots. You got to mm-hmm. do live shots. Mm-hmm. And I want to, but I just, I'm just not – ready to if that makes sense we yeah. totally Hold, get it holding the <laughs> holding the phone right mm-hmm. and talking and and you, you know because i want it to be quality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, well, we have a green screen back there but we very rarely use I it hear because you. of that reason right because you want to look <laughs> natural with yeah. everything right oh and, yeah and so those that's kind of one thing the other thing is facebook is really pushing reels right now mm-hmm. and so 
um, you know, having a business page with Facebook, they're constantly sending you things to how you can increase your viewership. And, mm -hmm. and so they're really pushing the whole real side of it. Um, I haven't really done any of that. I've dabbled with it. I'll take pictures and then string the pictures together and put mm -hmm. some on, on, on there, but that's not really been a big focus. Um, I'm certainly not going to dance and talk about the weather <laughs> like some of these people do. They want to see you out chasing right, any storms. Right, right, right. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm the, and and so there are different types of weather people. There's uh, storm chasers who are just excited about that. In Tennessee, storm chasing can get you in a world of hurt mm -hmm. because it's not like it's wide open like in Kansas and yeah. Oklahoma and Texas. You can get hurt, and so because you can't yes. see how the you storms are shifting, it's right or coming, or how <laughs> it's you, you or know the it's, flooding that may be ahead of you that you don't yeah. know about. Well, or the road goes a different direction, yes. right. and all of a sudden the tornado that you're driving beside, you're suddenly in front of it, yes. right? And so you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, so I've never been a chaser. I admire people that want to do that sort of thing. I'm sure it gets their heart pumping, but that's not me. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> And, and and I'm just more of the observer type. I want to tell you a a what happened, how it relates to the past. Um, we are a little warmer, but weather is cyclical. If you mm -hmm. look at the Cookville, if you look at Cookville records in terms of when, if you said to me, so when has it been the hottest here? Typically, I'd say in the late 1920s through the 1930s, late 1930s, we had about a 10-year period. Um, now, have we set some high-temperature weather records over the last 10 years or so? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. Weather is very cyclical, okay? It goes up and down. Mm -hmm. We haven't had as much snow, but then we'll have these big events, and that's mm -hmm. real typical for snow in Tennessee is that you don't get a lot of snow events. You get a lot of little stuff, and then all of a sudden we'll get a big snow. Mm -hmm. A lot of little stuff, because in order to get a big snow, you got to have a low pressure system that forms near the Gulf of Mexico and tracks south of us, mm -hmm. so the cold air can come in from the north, and then that low pressure system is pumping um, precipitation up to us, right. and it's cold enough to snow, so it's hard to get a big snow here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so to me, it's... Um, I like the observing part of it. So as we get close to closing out our podcast here, is there anything else you would like to share with us today while you're here? <clears throat> I, I would share, um, I would share if you have interest in it and you want to talk to me about it, reach out I'm on the social channels, you know, I mean, you can find me on my personal page if you want to as well. I'm kind of up to the max on number of right. friends on that, and I don't quite know what I'm going to do when that happens. But right. um, re reach out. If you want to have a conversation about it, I am all about having a, com a conversation about it. If, um, if you have a civic group, church group, mm -hmm. whatever kind of group, business group, um, I certainly will be more than happy to uh, work out a time where I can come and visit and uh, take questions from the audience. The questions are great. I'll get a ton of them from first graders, and I'll get a ton of them from an adult group. But you get a college age group, and you don't hardly get anything. Mm. Oh. And so, and so I have to challenge them a little bit. Don't make me call on you. And so, take some candy bars. The yes, next time and throw it them. at them. <laughs> right? That's it. So, um, I, I just appreciate you all. I appreciate what y'all are doing here at Hometown Digital Marketing. I think uh, I think you're providing a great service for the folks in our area, and I just encourage y'all to just keep rocking it because. It's changed in terms of business. When I was in the restaurant business, if we ran coupons in the newspaper, mm -hmm. I had to staff up for the weekend knowing those coupons were mm -hmm. coming out because right. we were going to get wiped out and they'd have them in their hand mm -hmm. walking in the door. If you put a coupon in the newspaper today, it's probably not going to work. Mm -hmm. right. We hadn't heard of social media. We hadn't heard of 
digital marketing. We hadn't heard of those things. The, geo fencing. Right. Geo. Right. I was going to yeah. say that. And yeah. we, we just haven't, we didn't have that. You can really target your marketing mm -hmm. today. And folks like you who are doing that sort of thing, it's important. And oh, so yeah. I, I would encourage you, you all keep pushing it, keep teaching people. Cause for some of the folks in my age range, 60 plus, we have to have a little reset in our mind in terms of how the, how these things work. How to reach your audience. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming today. Yeah, we did you. not pay him to say that. <laughs> no, but. we did not, but I do appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I, I have been admiring y'all from afar from what you're doing, and, and it takes time to build it up, to educate folks, to have the testimonials, to have mm -hmm. people who tell their friends, hey, I used them and it worked really well. And right. so I just I want to encourage you all with that. So. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to bringing you your neighbors and other stories of the Upper Cumberland. Tune in every week and we will bring you another story and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. But like, subscribe, and share so you never miss an episode. Thank you, and we'll see you next episode. Join us every week as we introduce our neighbors, businesses, and inspiring stories. People, businesses, and places that make the Upper Cumberland what it is today. As we tell all about the past, present, and even the future outlook. Like, comment, and subscribe so you do not miss an episode.